After returning to Australia just last year, Cherry has made a bit of a name for itself by introducing some of the most sharply priced SUVs in market. And their new seven-seater midsize SUV, the Tiggo 8 Pro Max, is no different. Starting at just 41,990, Cherry is hoping to impress Australian car buyers by including an impressive array of safety technology and some luxury features thrown in for good measure, even in their base level model. I've been lucky enough to drive the mid-spec variant, the Elite, which I'm here with today, and the top spec variant, the Ultimate. So I'm going to tell you whether it's worth paying that extra buck for that top spec or whether the lower spec variants are impressive enough already to stick with them. The mid-spec Elite starts at 43,990 drive away, whilst the highest spec model, the Ultimate, starts at 47,990. All three variants of the car are equipped with LED headlights, dual 12.3 inch screens, dual zone climate control, heated and ventilated seats, leather look upholstery, wireless phone charging, ambient interior lighting, a 360 degree camera, the list could go on. The Elite adds a power operated tailgate, heated side mirrors and built in dash cam, while the Ultimate is all wheel drive, has larger 19 inch wheels, a 10 speaker Sony sound system, privacy glass and a panoramic sunroof. Buyers looking for other seven seaters within a similar price bracket have the Mahindra XUV 700, the LDV D90, Nissan X-Trail, Mitsubishi Outlander, Mazda CX-8 and the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace to choose from. You'll notice that the Tiggo 8 actually isn't that different in design from the Tiggo 7. It's just a bigger car at 4,720 millimetres. One difference you will notice though is with the badge. This is slimmer, flatter and frankly looks a little bit sleeker against Cherry's signature diamond grille. Now the car also comes with LED head and tail lights. The two lower spec variants come with 18 inch wheels, whilst the higher spec variant comes with 19 inch wheels. And round the back of the car, you can see there's something a little bit sporty going on with these quad exhaust tips. Now I am in the mid spec variant, the Elite, but to be honest, you wouldn't notice any difference in the cabin here if I was in the base model or the top spec either. And I don't mean that in any way to be a criticism because all three variants are so well equipped. All three of them have these two 12.3 inch screens. They've all got this leather look and wood effect panelling here. Now look, this is just a personal preference. I don't love this different mix of materials. I personally think less is more, but that's fine. What I will say is that it's certainly more plush and more exciting than your typical hard plastics that you're more likely to find in other cars of this price point. The 12.3 inch infotainment system supports Apple CarPlay and Android technology and can be accessed wirelessly. There is a wireless charging dock below the infotainment screen, but you've also got USB-C plugs if you'd rather plug in. The car also has its own multimedia system built in, which has high definition graphics and is relatively simple to navigate. Cabin temperature, lighting, and the safety technology can also all be controlled via the touchscreen. So below this infotainment screen here, you can see that you've got this panel of touchscreen buttons here that control temperature, etc. And then below that, you've got this large central console, which has got big storage bin, you've got cup holders, USB ports, you've got a wireless charger, all great, plenty of storage, but because of the sheer size of this central console, it does rather impede the space around both me in the driver's seat and the passenger as well. It kind of eats into leg room just a little bit. But back to the good stuff, here in the driver's seat, I have got plenty of comfort. These electrically adjustable seats are nice and bolstered and let me tell you having done a three hour drive in this car yesterday they felt good throughout which is great the steering wheel as well comes with some leather features and then finally in the top spec model the ultimate you've even got a little fragrance dispenser in the car which is great if you've got a rather pungent passenger now 
Let me know what you think about the interior of this car. Does it impress or do you think there are other models within the same price bracket that do it better? Let us know in the comments below. So in this second row, you can see that I've got quite a nice amount of room to play with. I'm 171 centimeters for context. So you can see leg room there and also headspace, which would be impinged a little bit more in the top spec ultimate because you've got a panoramic sunroof. Now there's also an almost flat floor. So you can quite easily fit three adults in the back here relatively comfortably. And also if you're popping child seats in, then you've got isofix points and also top tether points. In terms of amenities, not much to complain about here. You can see that the door bins aren't huge. I can't really fit my drinks bottle in there very easily, but there are cup holders here in the middle. You've also got a USB-C and a USB-A port, directional air vents and map holders here as well. So if you're looking for a seven seater, I imagine that's because you need a seven seater. So it's a little bit strange then that it's a bit tricky to actually get into unless I'm missing something. This is all the room I've got to get into the third row. Not great for anyone. Well, it turns out there is another step in the process to slide that second row seat forward, making access to the third row much easier than I thought. However, if it was confusing for me, it means it isn't very intuitive. Might need a family demonstration before you all pile into the car. Once I've managed to get into the third row then, look, it's not bad. I wouldn't want to be the one that pulls the short straw and has to sit in the third row here as an adult, but you can see I've got a little bit of leg room. That's if the person in front of me is a six foot two adult. I'd rather have kids in the back here though. I think it's a bit of a squeeze for adults. You've got a few amenities. You've got cup holders here and you've actually got some coat hooks behind you as well. Now, in terms of boot space, you've got 117 litres when all three rows are being utilised, but when the third row is flat, you've got 479 litres. How does that compare to competitors then? Well, in the Mitsubishi Outlander and the Honda CRV, for example, you've got a little bit more room when all three rows are up, but a little bit less room when the third row is flat. All three variants of the Tiggo 8 Pro Max come with Cherry's most powerful petrol engine to date, a two litre turbocharged four cylinder unit, producing 180 kilowatts of power and 375 newton meters of torque. The car has a seven speed dual clutch transmission. How does this compare to its closest rivals? Well, the Mitsubishi Outlander ES and the Nissan X-Trail ST, both the entry level variants of those cars, have 2.5 litre engines and power outputs of 135 kilowatts. There are six different driving modes in the Ultimate, three of which accommodate off-roading. Meanwhile, in the Elite, you've got three different driving modes, Normal, Eco and Sport. Now, because the mid-spec Elite, which is the car I'm driving now, and the base level variant, the Urban, are both front-wheel drive, they are about 105 kilograms lighter than the all-wheel drive model, which is the highest spec Ultimate, and you can certainly feel that. When I was driving the Ultima, I found it a little bit unwieldy, and bear in mind that was with just two passengers in the car when it has the capacity for seven. For example, turning corners felt like a bit of an effort. Comparatively, this Elite feels much more composed to drive. There's certainly no lag in the power when I'm taking off, and it's relatively smooth. Don't get me wrong, I can feel when I'm going over potholes and undulated surfaces, but the car recovers itself very quickly. It's not the most powerful or dynamic car to drive, but in my opinion, it just doesn't need to be. It's a family car. It's a family SUV designed to run around the suburbs. It does exactly what it says on the tin. My complaint would be that I'm finding the braking a little bit soft and spongy. It's not quite as responsive as I would like it to be. Now, there are 18 different driving assist functions working in this car as I'm driving. But you can turn those off if you're finding them a little bit too intrusive. I would like them to give me a little bit more feedback. Lane keeping assist, for example, isn't hugely responsive and actually it's not super accurate on the screen in front of me. The other thing is the speedometer. It's so small 
and it doesn't change or alert me if I'm going slightly over the speed limit, which of course I know I shouldn't, but if I'm going 61 in a 60 zone, just let me know. So visibility out the front, great. Front window, nice and large. I've got these two big side mirrors here. Out the back, not so great. Bizarrely, the rear view mirror has kind of got this fisheye effect. So it makes everything look much smaller and much further away, which is quite disconcerting. Now, Cherry claims a fuel efficiency of 8.1 liters in the Tiggo 8 Pro Max. I've only driven the car briefly, of course, but I've returned a fuel reading of 8.8 .8 litres during my short time in the car. Not bad, obviously a little higher than claimed, mostly highway driving, some suburban driving. But in terms of where that lands with other competitors, that's about on par. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, it goes without saying, I haven't been able to spend heaps of time driving this car. So when it comes through the drive garage, we will certainly be able to give it some more rigorous testing and have a more accurate assessment. But in the meantime, if you have any questions about the Tiggo 8, please let us know in the comments below. And when it comes through the drive garage, we'll be able to get back to you on them. The Tiggo 8 Pro Max has a long list of active and passive safety features and 18 different advanced driver assistance systems, including adaptive cruise control, autonomous emergency braking, forward collision warning, lane departure warning and lane change assist, blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert and rear collision warning, door opening warning, speed control assist, traffic sign recognition and driver monitoring system. Cherry offers a seven-year unlimited kilometre warranty and seven-year cap price servicing. If you and your family are regularly towing or going camping or going off-road, then perhaps the all-wheel drive model, the top spec Ultimate, is the right option for you. And at 47,990, who can argue with that? However, and bearing in mind, I haven't yet driven the base model, the Urban, so we'll have to wait until that comes through the drive garage for our final accurate assessment, but putting that to the side, given all of the equipment, the safety technology, the luxury details, the quality materials that you get in all three specs of the Tiggo 8 Pro Max, I actually don't think you need to go top spec to get the best out of this car. And quite frankly, I enjoyed my driving experience in the two wheel drive better. So with that in mind, for now, the Elite is the one for me. The Tiggo 8 Pro Max is heading to showrooms this month, so head down and take one for a test drive yourself. If you enjoyed today's video, then please click the like and subscribe button and head over to drive.com.au for more excellent news and reviews.